this is a microphone and this is a speaker. One of the most interesting things in electronics is to understand how they can work together to reproduce a sound and make it louder, something like a megaphone. In a very simple diagram of such a circuit, there is at least one transistor. Two transistor diagrams work much better though. Transistors makes it possible to amplify current or voltage, although transistors make the circuit ambiguous. Don't worry, in this video I'm gonna teach you this diagram step by step and I guarantee that after watching this video you will completely understand how these transistors and other stuff on this diagram works and also this circuit will work for you either. You are gonna understand every single component on this diagram. If you are interested in analog electronics, don't miss this video. There are three main approaches to make a simple megaphone. First approach is to use basic components like transistors to amplify voltage or current. Second approach is to use op amps or amplifier ICs like TDA series or whatever else. And finally, Third approach is to use amplifier modules which are made of those amplifier ICs in second approach. In this video I am gonna explain this one which is made of basic components and works just fine. But I think it is better to take a brief look at those amplifier ICs and modules before getting started. These are amplifier ICs and modules. We can use them to amplify sound signals and certainly build a megaphone. To use these op amps and modules, you need a very simple setup diagram which is available on their datasheet. For example, I'm gonna look at datasheet of LM386 audio amplifier. There are a bunch of diagrams to make audio amplifier here and also there are some others here. But these diagrams are a little bit confusing to inexperienced people because the microphone is missing in these diagrams. If our goal was to build a megaphone only, using one of those approaches would be enough. In that case, I would prefer to use amplifier modules to make the work easier. But our goal in this video is to understand how transistors amplify voltage and current. Because of that, I am going to explain first approach and I will escape amplifier ICs and modules. The sound coming out of my mouth is a mechanical wave propagating on air. Shape of this wave is something like this. Peak-to-peak -peak value presents sound loudness and wave frequency presents the pitch of voice or sound. In this video, we are going to sense this waveform using a microphone converted to voltage signal by using a voltage divider or a potentiometer and amplify the signal using transistors and then play it back using a speaker. There is a diaphragm inside microphones. Main job of a microphone is to convert sound waves hitting its diaphragm to electrical quantity. Also, there is a diaphragm on speakers. Main job of a speaker is to vibrate that diaphragm to make loud sounds according to electrical signals we apply to its terminals. This is a speaker, a two terminal device. Its job is to produce sounds. I'm gonna apply voltage to these terminals to see how it produces sounds. But you may ask how much voltage can I apply to a speaker? It differs from a speaker to a speaker. You have to look at its back and see its parameters. For this one, power is a quarter and resistance is 16 ohm. By using these basic Ohmla equation and power equation, you can find maximum voltage for a speaker. I have got 2 volt for this one. In the same way, we can find maximum voltage for this one. Look here, resistance is 8 ohm and power is 2 watts.
I have got four volts for this one. Now I'm gonna apply two volts to this speaker. You see, this device needs voltage to produce sound and it draws current. This is key point we will refer later in this video. For now, I have to say that this noise sound coming out of the speaker is because of existence of noise on this portable power supply. To make meaningful sounds, we need to apply meaningful sound signals to these terminals. If I test this speaker with a low noise bench PSU, the noise will disappear. Now the noise is gone and we can hear pulse sounds when I apply voltage to this device. Never apply direct voltage to a speaker, it will harm the speaker. Here I do because I am showing you behavior of speakers. Look here, it draws about 110 milliamps, which is quite normal by using basic Ohm's law equation. By using basic Ohm's law equation, you can calculate current and compare it to real current the speaker draws. The difference is because of existence of resistance of wires and props in series with the speaker. First step to make a megaphone is to convert mechanical sound waves coming out of my mouth to electrical quantity. Microphones do that. Microphones convert mechanical sound waves to resistance. These microphones have basic resistance on their terminal. Let me measure it using my LCR meter. If somebody speaks to the mic, resistance between its terminals changes. But this change is not high enough and also they are very fast. Because of that, they aren't visible here on LCR meter. It is changing a little bit. I mean, when you speak to the microphone, this diaphragm here, I hope you can see it. The diaphragm inside the capsule vibrate and it causes resistance between these terminals to oscillate according to sound wave loudness and frequency, hitting the diaphragm around its basic resistance with very low amplitude. But if you blow into microphone, maybe changes get bigger and you can see changes on LCR meter. Never ever blow into a microphone because it will harm the diaphragm. I do because I am showing you this effect. You can find full explanation about capacitive microphones in my previous video. There is a link to that video in description. Microphones convert mechanical sound waves to resistance, which is useless because we can't amplify resistance. We have to set up a simple voltage divider circuit to present that resistance changes in form of voltage signal. After that, we will be able to amplify that voltage signal. How to do that? It's easy. This is a simple voltage divider. Voltage on point A have direct relationship with R2 value and inverse relationship with R1 value. We can replace either R1 or R2 with a microphone, then voltage change on point A will present the resistance change on microphones terminals and eventually it will present the sound wave in the environment. These microphones have polarity. If you look attentively to its terminals, you can find these traces connecting one of its terminals to aluminum body. This terminal which is connected to aluminum body is negative or ground. I'm gonna set up this circuit and test it.
If you are trying this circuit by yourself, make sure to connect the microphone in right polarity. This yellow signal shows voltage on point A. It is combination of a DC value and the sound signal. When I speak to the microphone, nothing seems to happen because sound signal amplitude is very small, so it is not visible. But when I blow into the microphone, you can see these waves here. You may ask why I use 2.2K resistor here. Good question. To be honest, I have to say that there would be no significant difference if I used other values because using other values, for example, 1K, 4.7K or even 10K affect mostly the DC part of the signal and its effect on voice signal is negligible. You may know that in next steps, we will remove DC part of the signal. DC part of the signal is not important to us in this application, but Due to my experience, choosing values close to microphone's basic value is an easy option. Here, I use 2.2K resistor because it is close to 2.4K basic resistance of the microphone. We can use a capacitor here like this to remove DC part of the signal. You may already know that capacitors block DC and conduct AC. Here we are using this feature of the capacitor to remove DC part of the signal on point A and let voice signal to pass to point B. I am using 100 nanofarad capacitor here to remove DC part. Now we can prop point B with oscilloscope and zoom the signal to see voice waveform. This is my voice signal without DC component, but the amplitude of the signal is still low. Look here, volt div is 100 millivolts. It means each square in Y direction presents 100 millivolts. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, three, four. The voice signal fits in four squares in Y direction. So we got about 400 millivolts peak to peak voice signal. Minimum voltage here is 200 millivolts negative and its maximum voltage is 200 millivolts positive. Yes, it's true. We have negative voltage on point B. We know a capacitor is needed here between points A and B to block DC value of the signal and let voice signal to pass. But you may ask why I use this particular value for this capacitor, I mean 100 nanofarad. Why, for example, 10 nanofarad capacitor is not used there, or even 1 microfarad capacitor or other values are not used there? This is a good question. The larger the capacity of this capacitor, the better it passes voice signal and the worse it blocks DC. I mean, if I decrease value of this capacitor, it will improve its DC blocking, but it will worsen its voice signal passing. And if I increase the value of this capacitor, it will improve its signal passing, but it worsen its DC blocking. So we have to establish a balance in choosing right value for this capacitor. Here I used 100 nanofarad capacitor because I think it is optimal and it is balancing both concerns. Look here again, peak to peak voltage here is about 400 millivolt. This range of voltage cannot produce audible sound out of a speaker like this because it is too low. It has to be several volts to become effective. Let me test it to make sure. Hello, 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 hello. You see there is no sound coming out of this speaker. When I connect the speaker to point B, it causes the signal on point B to disappear. When I disconnect the speaker from point B, my voice signal comes back to point B. And when I connect it again to point B, it causes the signal to disappear. This is because this speaker acts like a resistor, a 616 uh, ohm resistor. And... Uh, 
imagine you connect the uh, resistor here this is the reason why the signal on point B disappears when I connect the speaker to point B now what we have to do yes it is time to amplify this tiny voltage signal transistors can amplify either current or voltage here we are going to amplify voltage now we are faced with two pivotal questions first which transistor should I use second how to use a transistor to amplify voltage there are so many options available we can use almost every BJT transistor to amplify audio signals but it is better to use a transistor which is made for this purpose 2SC945 transistor is one of them if you look at its data sheet it is specified that this transistor is made to be used in audio amplifiers to answer second question I have to draw a circuit diagram first thing you may think about is to connect point B on this diagram to base terminal of a transistor it is somehow true but it is not enough and it will not work at all because whole signal here is under 0.6 volt the signal here is between 0.2 volt negative and 0.2 volt positive the transistor here is off when base voltage is under 0.6 volt let's look again to its data sheet we have a graph here here which is showing base voltage relationship with collector current i have printed this graph on this paper for base voltages under 0.6 volt here the collector current is about zero and for voltages more than 0.8 volt the transistor is saturated i mean it is completely on and the collector current is approximately constant but for voltages between 0.6 volt and 0.8 volt it is acting linear look here acting linear and amplifying collector current now we have two things to do first one is to shift audio signal from this range to this range and second one is to convert amplified collector current to voltage to get amplified voltage to shift voltage range we can use bias resistors even though it seems enigmatic it is super simple we have already did it in this video to overcome CFL bulbs noise there is a link to that video in description now I'm gonna explain BIOS resistors again from another point of view. These two resistors are BIOS resistors. Actually BIOS resistors add a constant voltage to a point in circuit. Here we need to keep voltage on base terminal around 0.7 volt using BIOS resistors. I call it BIOS voltage. Next step is to connect point B to this point. By doing this, bias voltage and voice signal coming from this capacitor will be added together. Eventually, voltage on base terminal will be between 0.6 volt and 0.8 volt. And finally, by referring to this graph, we can find out current on collector will be between 0 and 100 milliamps. This is exactly what we need. You may think there is a mistake. Let's do a simple calculation. As said, we have to produce 0.7 volt here on base terminal by using these bias resistors and add it to voice signal coming out of this capacitor which it is between 0.2 volt negative and 0.2 volt positive and it will result in voice signal on base terminal between 0.6 volt and 0.8 volt while while 0.7 volt minus 0.2 volt equals in 0.5 volt not 0.6 volt and and 0.7 volt plus 0.2 volt equals 0.9 volt not 0.8 volt is there a mistake i made you will get the answer later in this video now you may ask how to choose right values for these bias resistors the answer is quite simple 
To select the right values for RB1 and RB2, you can set one of them as you desired and find other one by using this simple equation from voltage divider network. For example, if you choose 1K for RB1, then RB2 will be equal to 162.80. Oh. This is all right, but there is another technique which is much easier. Using a potentiometer. You probably know that there are two variable resistors inside the potentiometer. When you turn a potentiometer, actually you are changing value of those variable resistors inside potentiometer. So we can connect side terminals of potentiometer to VCC and ground and use its middle terminal to bias a transistor and add a tiny and constant voltage to audio signal. Here like this, you can use a potentiometer to bias a transistor and keep it on active region of operation. By doing this, the transistor is always on middle of active region and by applying sound signal here, voltage on base pin will vibrate around 0.7 volt and then current on collector will vibrate between 0 and 100 milliamp. Last thing to do is to convert collector current to voltage. It is easy, just put a resistor here like this 1K resistor. When current goes through the resistor, voltage related to current will appear across the resistor. Even though the amplified signal here on point C is inverted, it is quite fine to use. Now it is time to set up this circuit and bias the transistor. I have used the 1K resistor here and a 50K potentiometer here. To bias this transistor, you have to look at the voltage on point C. This method goes like this. You have to turn the potentiometer clockwise and counterclockwise and find minimum and maximum voltages for point C. In this case and in this diagram, maximum voltage is equal to VCC and minimum voltage is equal to 0 volt. But you may find other voltages, for example, 4 volt and 0 volt. After that, you have to turn the potentiometer to adjust the voltage on point C on average voltage of maximum and minimum. For example, if you find 4 and 0 volt, you have to turn this potentiometer to set the voltage on point C on 2 volt and then it is ready to continue. Look here, minimum voltage is about 0 volt and and the maximum voltage is about 5.1 volt. So I have to adjust voltage on point C using this potentiometer to become average value about 2.6 volt or 2.5 volt. I have to say that when you are turning the potentiometer, the voltage on point C will stay on zero or maximum voltage. Don't worry, it is quite normal. You have to search for turning point and on that point, you have to turn the potentiometer carefully to find the exact point which sets voltage on point C at 2.5 volt. You may ask why I used 50K potentiometer there. What will happen if somebody use other values, for example, 10K or 100K? Actually, there is not a huge difference between these values in this case, but you have to keep in mind. Potentiometers add DC values to signal, but they scale down the signal either. By decreasing value of potentiometer, effect and mastery of bias voltage on signal will increase and it will scale down the signal much more. For example, a 10K potentiometer will scale down the signal much more than a 50K potentiometer. On the other hand, by increasing potentiometer value, uh, effect of other things like noise on point C will increase. So, we have to establish a balance in choosing optimal value for this potentiometer.
Here I have used 50k provisionally. I will change it later. Note that scaling down is not bad all the time. Here I have to choose a potentiometer value to scale down this range to this range beside adding DC value. Potentiometer value is the reason why 0.7 volt plus 0.2 volt equals 0.8 volt, not 0.9 volt. Let's set up this circuit and see how weak sound signal on point A is amplified on point C. Look here, these noises are because of low quality of output voltage in my pocket sized power supply. I am gonna switch this power supply with Benchlab linear power supply. Now those noises are gone. Look here again. When I talk into microphone, my voice signal appears here and the amplified signal appears here. You can see both signals on oscilloscope. Pay attention to volt diffs. This yellow signal is original signal on point B and its volt diff is 20 millivolt. And the blue signal is amplified signal on point C and its volt diff is 2 volts. Do you think we are done? Can I connect a speaker to point C? The answer is no, we are not done yet. And if I connect a speaker to point C, it can't produce audible sound. Even though we amplified voltage, it is too weak to drive a speaker. If I connect a speaker to point C, voltage level and the signal on point C will drop down to zero immediately. I mean, the voltage level on point C is okay, but it can't provide enough current to drive a speaker. So we have to amplify current of the signal. How to do that? I'm gonna show you, but before that, it is better to understand why the signal on point C is weak. I'm gonna connect this speaker to point C here to see what happens. Look here, when I connect the speaker to point C, the amplified signal on point C disappears. And when I disconnect the speaker from point C, the amplified signal comes back to point C again. This is because voice signal on point C is weak while its voltage range is high. Now we are going to know why voltage signal on point C is weak. The signal here is weak because of this 1K resistor. This resistor restricts the amount of current flowing to the speaker. Most simple method to make this signal stronger is to decrease value of this resistor. For example, you can use 100 ohm instead of 1K. This is most simple method, but this method has many disadvantages. It is better to use another transistor after point C to amplify its current. This structure forces this transistor to keep a tiny and constant voltage on base emitter junction. Eventually, this transistor is forced to amplify current on its collector to keep voltage on base emitter junction fixed. Now my voice is coming out of uh, this speaker here and uh, There was a problem with this speaker because of that I'm using this one to test the circuit. Now you can hear my voice coming out of this speaker when I talk to microphone. I can test it in this way. You can hear the sound when I blew into microphone. And the last test is to put the microphone near the speaker.
the voice coming out of the speaker is completely uh, fine, clear, and low. And it is amazing. I know you have many questions about this current amplifier. What it means? How a transistor can amplify current? Why did you set up a transistor like that? And so many other questions about this current amplifier. I have explained the idea behind this current amplifier in a separate video. In that video, we have a variable and weak voltage and we have to amplify its current to control the speed of a DC motor. The video is here in this card and also there is a link to that video in the description. You can watch that video to fully understand the idea behind this current amplifier. So this video is ending, but there are two critical points I have to say before saying goodbye. Both points are related to VCC voltage. First point is to select a stable voltage source because a little change in VCC voltage will cause failure of this circuit. The reason is this bias potentiometer. If the VCC voltage changes, you have to readjust this bias potentiometer again. Second point is the VCC voltage itself. How much it should be? 2 volts? 4 volts, 5 volts, 10 volts, how much? It depends on many parameters, but one of the most important parameters to select the right VCC voltage in this circuit is the speaker. We have already calculated maximum voltage this speaker can tolerate. We found 2 volts for this one and 4 volts for this one. So, maximum VCC voltage for this circuit with this speaker is 2.7 volts because of 0.7 volt loss here and 4.7 volt for this speaker because of 4 volt maximum uh, tolerable voltage for this speaker plus 0.7 volt loss here. The amplifier we have built in this video have many disadvantages. For example, it draws current constantly. But our goal in this video was to learn something about transistors and I think we hit it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.